Hey guys, Tony Maritato here. So the new 2001 fee schedule is up on the CMS Physician Fee Schedule Lookup Tool. So in this video, I'm gonna show you guys PTs, OTs, SLPs, how to look up the Medicare allowed amount for participating providers and non-participating providers. The easiest way to get started behind me on the screen, I've got a Google page open. I'm gonna type in CMS Physician Fee Schedule Lookup Tool. Now, even though it says physician fee schedule, this is this applies to all the CPT codes that we would normally be billing. So it takes me to the CMS website. I click on Medicare Physician Fee Schedule Lookup Tool. I begin my search. Now they've revamped the website. It looks different than it did last year. I'm gonna accept the terms. You can see here we've got the year that we're searching for. We want pricing information from type of information. We want, I usually do a list of CBT codes and then here I'm gonna do physical therapy, 97161. The reimbursement rates for all three levels of evaluation are the same. So I'm just gonna do the low complexity. I'll do therapeutic exercise, uh, therapeutic activity. I'll do manual therapy and neuro re -ed. whoops. Yeah, we want all modifiers from the drop down, and we want to choose um, Mac based on locality. So I'm here in Ohio. If I start to type in Ohio, I can get my Mac right there, and I'm going to click search fees. Now, if you're an SLP or an OT, you just put in your codes, but this is basically the same process. And then what you see here across the top, so we have the list of CPT codes on the left. We have a short description in the middle. We have non-facility price, facility price, private practices. If you're Medicare Part B private practice, we are non-facility pricing. And if you look over here on the far right, you see non-facility limiting charge. Hang on just a sec. Gotta let my pup out. Okay, so non-facility limiting charge. So let's talk about this for a minute. The non-facility price. This is the Medicare allowed amount for a participating provider. So if you bill, let's say, therapeutic exercise at a rate of $50 a unit, you are going to be allowed a maximum of $29.21 if you're a participating provider. The Medicare Part B coverage is 80% of the $29.21. The patient responsibility or the secondary insurance will pick up the remainder. So you're gonna have to know based on, is it a supplemental policy? Is it a non-supplemental secondary policy? Does the patient not have any other coverage besides Medicare Part B? That is a possibility, in which case the patient's responsible for the 20%. Now in other videos, I go through how to understand reimbursement and an EOB, how to understand what the MPPR reduction is and sequestration, but for this video, we're just looking at Medicare fee schedule. Now, I want to explain the 3191 for those of you who are wondering about being a non-PAR provider. It's important that we understand two things. One, Medicare does not have anything known as out of network. You're either a participating provider or a non-participating provider. Both of those are contracts with Medicare. You can find information about the difference between par and non-par in another video that I've published a while back. But essentially in both of these situations, you are contracted providers with Medicare. The third scenario is you have no affiliation to Medicare. We're not gonna talk about that in this video. So as a non-participating provider with Medicare, your allowed amount is 95% of the participating provider allowed amount. So if you took $29.21, uh, you would be eligible for 95% of that as a non-PAR provider if you accept assignment. If you choose not to accept assignment as a non-PAR provider, 
you're allowed to charge the Medicare beneficiary up to 115% of your non-PAR allowed amount. If you do the math, that number works out to a maximum of $31.91. So non-PAR seems like an appealing um, opportunity because it allows you that extra reimbursement, but you have to remember in order to collect 115% of the non-PAR allowed amount, you have to not accept assignment, you have to collect it from the beneficiary, and you still have all of the compliance and regulatory burden of a participating provider. So look for my other videos if you want to understand more of the difference between PAR and non-PAR for PTOTSLP. My main goal today was to show you how to look up the 2021 physician fee schedule so you can look at different reimbursements for different CPT codes. Guys, I hope this video was helpful. If it was, do me a favor like the video, share the video if you know other clinicians who are looking for this information. And as always, if you haven't already subscribed, take a minute, subscribe to the channel so I can reach more therapists out there with this information. Have a great day, guys.